नमो भगवते Thank you for joining today. Uh, we like to seek the blessings of Brother Mata, Brother Shamsam, Krishna Balaram, Gonitai, Shri Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj. And wanted to continue with the uh, series on Saptarishis. Um, so today we want to look at Marichi Rishi, who is actually very famous. He's mentioned in many, many places in the Srimad Bhagavatam is also mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita by Lord Krishna. So let's have a look at who this amazing personality is. <clears throat> He's a member of the Saptarishis of the first Manvantara. That's Shyambar Shambar, Manu. A son of Lord uh, Brahma. His name is Marichi. It means a ray of light. Among other rishis, Pulasya was generated from his ears. Angira from his mouth, a three from his ears, sorry, eyes, and Marichi from his mind. And Pulaha, uh, who we'll be looking at tomorrow, from the navel of Lord Brahma. This is in the Bhagavatam 3.12.24. Sage Marichi is also considered one of the Ma Manasaputras, or, or a ru uh, Pajapati, a ruler. Pajapati also means a progenitor, created from Brahma's mind. And the other nine are as follows. <coughs> so these are Lord Brahma's children. Um, uh, Manasaputras. Atri Rishi, Angiras. So we've looked at those two as well as part of the Saptarishi series. Pulaha, that's tomorrow. Pulatsya, the day of, uh, oh no, tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow we're doing Sanatan Goswami. Mm. Uh, later on this week, anyway. Pulatsya as well. Katu, we looked at a couple of days ago. Vashishta Muni also. Daksha. Daksha is uh, somebody <clears throat> whom we've come across in the Srimad Bhagavatam quite a bit. Um, Bhigu, we've also looked at him as one of the Saptarishis. And Narad Muni is Dev Naradji, uh, Dev Rishi Narad. Very famous personality. <clears throat> Let me just clear the throat. So the nine principal rishis, so these are a different now, a different set of rishis, um, are, and these are regarded to be nine principal rishis in, according to the Bhagavatam. Marichi is one of them, Atri, Angiras, Pulatsya, Pulaha, Kratu, Prabhu, Vashishta, and Atharva. All these rishis are the most important. And Brahma desired that nine daughters, um, bo already born of Kadamuni, to be handed to those nine wishes. So Kardamuni's daughter Kala was married to Marichi. And they had two children whose names were Kashya and Purnima. Their descendants are spread all over the world. This is Bhagavatam 4.113. And Kashya, Kashya Muni, again, we've uh, looked at his uh, pastimes as uh, Saptarishi as well, is sometimes also known as Pajapati, having inherited the office from his father. All three, namely um, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, are incarnations of Garbha Daksha Vishnu. From Brahma, the other demigods like Daksha, uh, Marichi, Manu, and many others become incarnated to generate living entities within the universe. This is from purport of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 135. And then in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, we have this slok. <coughs> Adityanam aham Vishnu Jyoti Sham Ravir Am Shuman Mariche Marutam Ashmi Nakshaktaram Aham Sasi of the Aditya Sam Vishnu of lights I'm the radiant sun of the Marut Sam Mariche and among the stars I'm the moon. So among the Maruts <clears throat> I am Marichi. Interesting how Krishna uh, brings Marichi into the Bhagavad Gita. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada states that Marichi is the controlling deity of the heavenly spaces. He is also the author um, of the Vimanjana Kalpa. And in the Bhagavatam 418, there is a description of Marichi becoming a Saptarishi under Swambhu Mantra. So here we go. Uh, Kushita Nama Tedevaha Tadeva Vantare. Marichi Mishra Sayo Yagna Sura Ganeshwara 
During the time of Swayambhu Manu, these sons all became the demigods, collectively named the Tushitas. Marichi became the head of the seven rishis, and Yagya became the king of the demigods Indra. During the life of Swayambhu Manu, six kinds of living entities were generated from the demigods known as the Tutista, Tushitas, from the sages headed by Marichi, and from descendants of Yagya, king of the devas, and all of them expanded their progeny to observe the order of the Lord to fill the universe with souls. These six kinds of living entities are known as Manus, Devas, Manuputras, uh, Amshavataras, Sureshwaras, and Vishis. Srimad Bhagavatam 1632-31 states that after 4.3 billion solar years, when Brahma woke to create again by the will of the Lord. All the rishis like Marichi, Yangira, uh, Atri, and so on were created from the transcendental body of the Lord. And I also appeared al along with them. So this would be stated by um, Narad Muni. And in the Bhaktivinoda Purport to text number 31, we read, the causeless mercy of Lord Vishnu is unparalleled and such mercy is perceived by the devotees only by the grace of the Lord. Therefore, the devotees never fall down. But the materialists, the fruity, i.e. the fruity workers and the speculative philosophers do fall down, being forced by their respective modes of nature. So where do they fall from? Basically the spiritual nature. So the rishis and the sages, they are always in the spiritual, on the spiritual platform. But those who are materialists, like we are, we unfortunately come and get entangled in this world through these modes of material nature. The rishis, as uh, above mentioned, cannot enter into the spirit, transcendental world like Narad. This fact is disclosed in Nasimha Purana. Rishis like Marichi are authorities in fruitive work, and rishis like Shonak and Sanatan are authorities in philosophical speculation. But Narad Muni, He's a prime authority for transcendental devotion service of the Lord. So we see Narad Muni, he's not categorized as Saptarishi or Brahmishi or uh, anything like that. His position is completely transcendental. He's a devotee of the Lord. And that a devotee of the Lord is above um, any classification, even amongst the Rishis. This is really uh, very, very interesting and very powerful. The devotee of the Lord is above um, even this material crea creation and the designations, even on a philosophical point of view or uh, even from a point of view of rishis and munis, because there is rishis are great personalities because um, they propagate the Vedic philosophy, they practice it, they understand it, but yet they're still not equal to a devotee because the devotee's position is that um, he is, they are prime authority for transcendental devotional service to the Lord. All the great authorities in devotional service of the Lord follow in the footsteps of Narad Muni in order to, you know, in the order of the um, <clears throat> Narad Bhakti Sutra. And therefore, all the devotees of the Lord are un unhesitatingly qualified to enter into the kingdom of God by Kunta. So this puts the position of the Bhaktas. Uh, above even the rishis. So it's uh, very interesting. Not that we want to minimize the position of these rishis because they're very important, especially the Sapta rishis, very important in the governance of this universe. There are many references to Marichi Rishi in the Vedas and throughout Sri Prabhupada's pur purports. Marichi is a controlling deity of the heavenly spaces. Many of these relate, uh, the purports relate to Marichi's role as a progenitor under the direction of Lord Brahma. In his purport to Srimad Bhagavatam 424.72, Sri Prabhupada writes, Lord Brahma was created by Lord Vishnu, then Lord Brahma created Lord Shiva and the other great sages headed by Brigu Muni. These great sages included Brigu, Marichi, Atreya, Vashish, and others. All these great sages were in charge of creating population. Since there were not 
very many living entities in the beginning, Vishnu entrusted Brahma with the business of creation. And Brahma in his turn created many hundreds and thousands of demigods and great sages to continue with the creation. At the same time, Lord Brahma cautioned all his sons and disciples by reciting the prayers now recited by Lord Shiva. The material creation means material engagement. But material engagements can be contracted if we always remember our relationship with the Lord as that relationship is described in these prayers recited by Lord Shiva. So again, Marichi is mentioned as a great, great sage. So in the Shiva Bhagavatam 429, 42 to 44, there's another mention of Marichi and his associate progenitors as described by Sage Narad Muni. The most powerful Lord Brahma, the father of all progenitors, Lord Shiva, Manu, Daksha, and the other rulers of humankind, the four saintly first-class Brahmacharis, headed by Sonak and Sanatan, the great sages, Marichi, Atri, Angira, Pulatsya, Pulaha, Kratu, Brigu, and Vashist, and my humble self, Narad, are all stalwart Brahmins who can speak authoritatively on Vedic literature. We are very powerful because of austerities, meditation, and education. Nonetheless, even after inquiring about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whom we always see, we do not know perfectly about him. <laughs> And that's not surprising because even the Supreme Personality of God himself doesn't know himself <laughs> completely because his qualities are always increasing. He's dynamic. He's not an old man about to die as he's portrayed in some uh, religious orders. He's actually uh, eternally like a 16-year-old boy. And but um, of course he's a transcendental personality, and uh, always uh, um, his qualities are multiplying even beyond his own understanding. So some one time the example of this is given in the Bhagavatam again. One time in Dwarka, he was looking at himself in the mirror. I happened to see himself on the uh, mirror tile, tiles which are mirrored. And he wondered, who is this amazing personality? <laughs> Looking at himself, he was thinking, who is this? <laughs> According to foolish Darwinian theory of the anthropologists, it is said that 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens had not appeared on this planet because of the process of evolution has, had not reached that point. However, the Vedic histories, the Puranas, the Mahabharats relate human histories that extend millions and millions of years into the past. Both had often used to say, ah, oh, yeah, they're saying that they come from the apes and they probably do, but we come from the Brahmins. <laughs> Lord Brahma and from him em emanated all the Manus and the Brahmacharis like Shonak and Sanatan, as well as Lord Shiva, the great sages and Narad as well. All these personalities underwent great austerities and penances and thus became authorities in Vedic knowledge. Perfect knowledge for human beings, as well as all beings, is contained in the Vedas. All of the above mentioned great personalities are not only powerful, being cognizant of past, present and future, but are also devotees. Still, in spite of their great education in knowledge and despite their meeting the Supreme Personality of God and Lord Vishnu, they cannot actually understand the perfection of the living entity's relationship with Lord Vishnu. This means that these personalities are still limited as far as their knowledge of the unlimited is concerned. The conclusion is that simply by advancing one's knowledge, one cannot be accepted as an expert in understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Personality of Godhead can be understood not by advanced knowledge, but by pure devotional service, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, 1855. And 1855 is, um, uh, how's that called? Bhaktiya Mama Bijanati, Basically saying that uh, the Supreme Personality of God can be only known through devotional service. The nature of the presence of rishis like Mirichi in this material world is further explained by Shri Prabhupada in chapter 87 of the Krishna book. As for the material creation, Brahma is the first created person. 
For Brahma, there was no living creature within this material world. It was void and dark until Brahma was born on the lotus flower, sprouted from the abdomen of Gavadakshai Vishnu. Gavadakshai Vishnu is an expansion of Karanadakshai Vishnu. Karanadakshai Vishnu is an expansion of Sankarshan, and Sankarshan is an expansion of Balram. Balram is an immediate expansion of Lord Krishna. After the creation of Brahma, the two kinds of demigods were born. Demigods are like the four brothers, Sanat, Sanatan, Sanadan, and Sanat Kumar, who are the representatives of renunciation of the world. And demigods like Marichi and their descendants, who are meant to enjoy this material world. From these two kinds of demigods were gradually manifest all other living entities, including the human beings. Thus, any living creature within this material world, including Brahma, all the demigods, and all the Rakshashas, are to be considered modern. <laughs> This means that they were all recently born. Therefore, just as a person recently born in a family cannot understand the situation of his distant forefather, so anyone within this material world cannot understand the position of the Supreme Lord. Yeah. In the spiritual world, because the material world has only recently been created, although they have a long duration of existence, all the manifestation of the material world Namely, the time element, the living entities, the Vedas, and the gross and subtle elements are all created at some point. Anything manufactured within this created situation or accepted as a means to understanding the original source of creation is to be considered modern. And this is one of the reasons why we, we face this question um, practically every time we go to schools or when we give lectures. How was God born? Who made God? Who created God? Thing is, it's something that's very hard for us to get our heads around because we are modern. <laughs> We're considered modern. We've just come into being. And because this world, there's always a beginning, middle and end. It's very difficult for us to conceive a situation where there is no beginning, there is no middle, there is no end. Uh, time has a different concept in the spiritual kingdom. Here, time effectively destroys everything. But in the spiritual world, time functions in a different way. Time functions to serve the Lord, not destroy. Um, so its uh, uh, functionality is different. The way it operates is different. And that for us to understand and to accept and to uh, completely believe it is, is challenging. So we often get this question and uh, it's, it's, um, the answer is simply that we're not going to be able to understand. We have to, take, we have to give, put some faith in the understanding that God is eternal. This point is further elaborated in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 6, 3, 14 to 15. I am Raj, Indra, the king of heaven, Niti, Varun, Chandra, the moon god, Agni, Lord Shiva, Pavan, Lord uh, Brahma, Surya, Sun God, Vivasu, the eight, um, sorry, Vish, Vasu, the eight Vasus, the Satyas, the Marut, the Rudras, the Siddhas, Marichi, and other great sages engaged in maintaining the department affairs of the universe as well as the best of the demigods headed by Brihaspati. And great sages headed by Brigu are all certainly freed for the influence of the two base material modes of nature, namely passion and ignorance. Nevertheless, although we are in the mode of goodness, one, we cannot understand the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What then is to be said of others who are under illusion merely speculate to know God? <laughs> this is very, very powerful statements. In the purport, Popa says the men and other living entities within this cosmic manifestation are controlled by the three modes of nature. For the living entities controlled by base qualities of uh, nature, passion, ignorance, there is no possibility of understanding God. Even those in the mode of goodness, like the many demigods and great wishes described in these verses, cannot understand the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. St has stated in the Bhagavad Gita, one, is, one who is situated in devotional service of the Lord is transcendental to all the material qualities. So back to Marichi again. He is believed to be formed out of the sustained energy of Lord Vishnu. He is believed to have officiated the penance of Brahma at Pushkar, uh, found in the modern day Rajasthan. 
So at one point, uh, and funny, we were just reading this in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, it happened that Lord Brahma um, became attracted to his own daughter. And of course, Lord Brahma, especially the Lord Brahma that we are living under, is regarded to be a, be a pure devotee of the Lord. But he was put under Maya by the Lord to help us understand that in this world, no one is exempt from Maya. So don't be too arrogant. <laughs> so when he became attracted by his daughter, his sons headed by Marichi, Maricha, Marichi, yeah, sorry. They, they, they try to, they, they try to preach to him that this is not right. What you're doing is not right. <laughs> But Bhamma, because of the, the uh, attack of Maya, could not um, control himself. Eventually he did. He gave up his body. And he also uh, took up penance at Pushkar. And that was officiated by uh, Marichi. He, along with Narad, is also believed to have visited Bhishma during the Mahabharata, when he was lying on the uh, bed of arrows. Marichi is also quoted as the advisor of young Dhruv to pursue austerities. So as a Saptarishi, one of the duties of the Saptarishis is to um, look at the internal affairs of the universe and make sure that um, things are going reasonably well. Uh, and one time when Dronacharya was practically destroying the Pandav army, and he was so strong. At that time, actually, Atri Rishi, together with seven other sages, came and explained to Dronacharya, this is not right. You are a, a, a Brahman, where you've taken up weapons, and you're destroying the armies. So now it's time to give up. And he actually listened to, he actually listened to uh, Atri Rishi. So Marichi, they also came to hear Bhishma, or visit Bhishma. They also, and Marichi is also famous for giving advice to Dhruv Maharaj. They can see these great souls coming and they would um, give them shelter. So Dhruv Maharaj, of course, we know from the Bhagavatam how within six months, only a five-year-old boy, but he, but he performed such austerities that he was able to um, have darshan of Lord Vishnu. So this is apparently some a very old um, depiction of uh, Marichi. So we want to stop there. Uh, are there any questions or any comments? Please. Yes, Gita. Uh, you know, in Ramayan, hmm. during the um, kidnap of Mata Sita, hmm. because she basically, I think, wanted uh, was attracted by this golden deer. Mm. And asked Lord Ram to to get it. Now that that deer was actually, I think, uh, like a, a Marichi, isn't it? We referred to it. Is that Marichi and this Rishi Marichi any connection or? No, they're two different persons. Yes, you're okay. absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, right, right. Okay. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up because I was thinking myself, how come they got the same name? <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> but it must be a little difference in because that, that Marichi. It's supposed to be quite powerful. He can transform yes. his body and take different forms. Correct. Okay. And Jenti is just saying his name might be Marich as opposed to Marichi. Okay. I don't know. Right, I'll, right. Just, I'll just check. <laughs> but yeah, you know, thank you for asking. Uh, thank you. Yeah, he was very powerful. You're right. He was extremely powerful. Um, Ultimately, apparently, Lord Ram killed him. Uh, yeah. And so he was like uh, he attained um, Moksha. <laughs> uh, eternal whatever bliss. Yeah, because, liberation. Yeah. You know. Liberation, yeah. Because what happened? Uh, yeah, it is Marich, by the way. Marich. Marich. Okay, thank you. Um, but what happened? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is that, who's that? Uh, Mr. Saha. Yeah. Uh, that uh, question was very, very important. I was confused. <laughs> yeah, well done, Gita. <laughs> yeah. 
So what happened? The the sister of Ravan, uh, Shubhanka, she she went after her nose was cut off. She went to Ravan and she was explaining to Ravan how beautiful Sita is and she should be yours and this and that. So Ravan got attracted. And he said to Marich, "That Marich, you um, you better go uh, and do something for me to distract Ram." And uh, Malit said, now nah, look, Ram is very powerful. Because as you said, he actually was actually a wise person, a demon, but he was a wise mm -hmm. demon. And um, Ram said, I'll kill you if you don't do it. And Malit said, okay, don't worry. I'd rather be killed by Ram than you. <laughs> so he's a very, very wise person. So he went to do what Ravan said, but actually he was um, a great soul. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yes, no, no. yes, yes, and thanks for Gita Mataji for asking that question because that was in my mind as well. <laughs> yeah. Now the thing is, what I'm confused is, in the beginning you mentioned about Marichi Rushi, hmm. and only thing I remember, I sort of understood is that he's the son of Brahma, but you hmm. mentioned other origins as well. Yeah, from Vishnu. <laughs> Vishnu, yes. Ultimately, everybody comes from Vishnu. That's, that's the way I've uh, okay. sort of rationalized it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, you're right. It, even if on some of some of the other rishis, um, there's there's a number of. I, I was just doing actually Agni Dev, the Dev, Devata, and there's quite a few. You know, like uh, how he did he appear? There's quite a few versions of how he appeared, and they may all be true. Yeah. Because uh, you know, in different kalpas, in different days of Brahma, they appear in different ways. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the timeline gets mixed up. So we're never quite sure, you know, where this personality has actually taken birth from. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, okay. the, the contradictions are there. Yeah. Contradictions, yes. I think from in, in Srimad Bhagavatam also, there are a few things here and there which we cannot understand. Correct, now, correct. There's what I was going to ask something. Yeah, the Prajapatis and this all these Prajapatis were there to procreate. Isn't it? Increase the population. Same correct. thing with all these rushis as well. Some of the rushis are Pajani, Pajapatis. That's correct. Um, yeah. For example, the first born of Brahma were the four Kumaras. Yes. And uh, Lord Brahma said to them, now go and procreate. And they said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, we don't want to be entangled in this material world. And he, gave, he got very angry. And he cursed them, you're always going to be little children. And they were happy. But their aim, uh, his, his, the purpose for him uh, creating them was to uh, populate the world, correct? Same as uh, Prajapatis as well. Yeah, the, he, they also are. But of course, they became great sadhus, uh, great saints, great devotees. And then from the anger, actually, what happened? Because Brahma got angry, Rudra came out of that. Mm. Anger. And then Rud he also told Rudra, you have to now create. So Rudra started creating all sorts of very scary personalities, you know. <laughs> so then uh, he told Rudra, okay, just relax. Don't do anything now. Just do some meditation, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, all of these, uh, the original uh, creations of Lord Brahma uh, were to help him populate the world. Mm. Uh, that's correct. Some of them were rishis as well, isn't it? Yes. Most of them are rishis. Most of them are rishis. Yeah. These Prajapatis are, some of them are rishis as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Most of them are. Most yeah. of them. Yeah. Most of them are. Because you showed one slide where you said this mm -hmm. Prajapati, I think second or third slide, That's where correct. all these Prajapatis are there. And after the nine sons of Brahma, there was a, if you go to that slide. Yep, yeah. Nine sons of Brahma, and at the side, you yeah, this one. Yes. So see. Yeah, the all, all uh, apart from Daksha, Daksha is probably not on the level of the rest of the sages. Uh, and Narad Muni also. Narad Muni uh, always remained a brahmachari. Uh, but yet, uh, you know, the others are all Pajapatis, uh, all uh, uh, progenitors, basically. So, you for know. example, from Marichi. Oh, Marichi is not on this list, but from Marichi also came um, Kashyap Muni. And Kashyap Muni was, he, he, he gave, uh, you know, a lot of the, <coughs> of the animal kingdom comes from him. Plant world comes from him. So, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, yeah, a bit clear. Thank you, Papuji. Bit clear, but it's quite it's quite hard to com it's hard, yeah. comprehend it because uh, you know our tiny brains uh, we never be able to grasp what Brahma's creation is like, you know, let alone the spiritual world. <laughs> but yeah, Thank very interesting. Thank you. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, yes, I was waiting. I was listening, which is very nice. It's quite interesting. Uh, in the beginning, as the other Mataji said, yeah, they, you said they were born from the ray of the light. Is it like from the ears, mouth, eyes, yes. mind? So they have not taken the birth. Is that no, what you're saying? They're actually people. But they, it's the way Brahma is so powerful that from his different yeah, parts. ray of light. Yeah, from his uh, different parts of his uh, body or his mind, he can generate these personalities. He doesn't need um, a female to generate. He's got the yeah. power to generate these people, these personalities. So they're real yeah. people, they're real personalities. You know. this person, and they can, and they, these are all the Rishis born. Yeah, uh, 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 these are like uh, the <clears throat> Manasa Putras, the uh, the, uh, the sons of Brahma who come from his mind, basically. They, they're able to uh, he's a, he's so powerful. He can create uh, from even his own mind these personalities. Personalities, so, right? Yeah. Yeah, but, they're, just... but they're spirit souls in their own right, and they are great souls. They actually some of them are perhaps you could even argue greater souls than Brahma. So, All right. Yeah, yeah. But he has yeah. the power to do. He's given that power by Krish, by Vishnu. Krishna, Vishnu. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Thank you for thank you. thank you for taking such interest. Really good. Yeah, I, I in the in the starting when you said this, I have put down the question here. I said, in the business, <laughs> I will ask it. And yeah. it's nice about the ladies talked about the marriage. Uh, marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you very much. And when you keep saying material world, material world, what, what does that mean? Please? That's the world we're living in. Oh. This material world, uh, which is you see de birth, death, old age, disease, uh, and the Satogun, right. uh, Rajagun, Tamagun has right. a life in this world. Yeah. All right. And then Thank there's a world you. beyond this world, the spiritual world, where spiritual. there's no death, and there's no birth, no old age, no disease, and right. Tamagun, Rajagun, and Satogun are not there. Okay, all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Marichiki Jai. Marichiki Jai. Bye. Bye.